gets a brand new ride, brings it to the GNCC, and makes history here today, taking the win here at the Mountaineer GNCC. All right, let go, let go, let go. It's not something that I, I would ever admit, you know, it's hard to admit it to your wife, much less a camera, but I mean, there was a day last week where I just, I, I broke down. I mean, there was, I felt like there was nothing left in the tank. Uh, there, it, there was just nothing. Look at this battle on screen that we have here. Caleb Russell and Stu Baylor, neither one of them willing to give up an inch. Stu Baylor on the back wheel going through that left-hander as they head down the hill and back off into the woods. Side by side coming out on the sail and you pass motocross facility. Rodney, take it from here. And Stu Baylor with a slight advantage, but here comes Caleb Russell trying to drive up on the outside now. Stu Baylor on the inside, high and wide. Here comes Caleb Russell trying to get the momentum. He shut the door on him. Now Baylor goes wide and to the inside goes Caleb, Caleb Russell. Russell takes the pass, leaving the door open. Was the sure road ride of Stu Baylor. He basically gave this for the weight. Well, <laughs> I decided uh, it was finally time to get my knee fixed. I just wanted to be 100%, and um, it was a tough decision, but it was, you know, it, it was, I think, the best decision for the time. Now, looking back, it, it pisses me off that I even got it done. Um, you know, I, I'm, I'm ready to go racing, and obviously my knee won't be. Obviously, I've been riding on a bum knee for about a year and a half now. So we just decided it was time to get it fixed um, on a three-year deal with Sherco. And this year, not knowing what when we're going back to racing, what we might be doing next, obviously, it's time to kind of change gears and think about what's best for the future and hopefully, hopefully moving in the right direction. Well, we're halfway to Nashville. It's uh, it's been tough. The just the drive here, even you know, I I've been talking myself out of this surgery, which makes things tough. But you know, in, in my mind, in a racer's mindset, you're you're good to go. You're ready to go. You know that you can still do it. I know that I can still walk. I know I can still well, not run because I don't like to run. But uh, I never never did anyway. The only time I'm running is if the old ladies. The old lady's asking for money or something big's chasing me. So, you know, it's uh, it's tough knowing that I can do all that I need to do, but I still need this surgery, and I want to be as healthy as I can. I, I've only had one entry in the last five or six years now, so I'd like to, like to keep it that way and, and fix that one and hopefully be back at 100% stronger than ever within the next five to six months. So what do I need to be doing by Thursday? Lifting my leg? Yep. No, we're, Just like that. We're on it. We're on it. Two days ahead of recovery. Yep. Good for you. I knew you'd be good. A little ice pack to, to help cool things down for you. So I'm not bone on bone yet. No way. Perfect. All right. All right. How many years you given me before a knee replacement? 30. 
He's still gonna be operating 35 years from now. I hope so. <laughs> All right. Well, I'll call you in about 34. All right, sounds good. Have a good night. All right. Awesome. Ready to break on out of here? Let me get one last blood pressure. Okay, straighten this one out. You're on the couch. You've resolved the knee surgery at this point. That was a team decision in the beginning, so it was with the team, but now there's a split. The team's not here anymore. There's some issues. Like, where does that leave you? I mean, we get the surgery, and, and it was it, it, it was something that, that I had agreed upon, um, you know, with, with the team. and. And I, the the day that the contract was terminated, I mean, I honestly, I was, I was lost. Like I, I'm, I mean, I'm still lost. It's uh, definitely added a whole new factor to to all of this. I mean, it's uh, it, it it's just you know frustrating, upsetting, and and at the end of the day, you know, I I've got to blame myself. I I allowed this to happen, and. Um, you know that's that's tough. Like tough to admit that you're that you put your your future and your house and everything in jeopardy based upon a decision that you made, and you know put your wife and 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 to the same position and and your future and the things that you had planned for this season. You know it's uh it's tough. It's it's a lot to wrap your mind around. Oh. God! I don't know what we're doing. We're gonna figure it out. I'm glad to get sick. It's okay, we're on our way. I'm gonna get sick. Yeah, I've never been in pain like this, and I don't know what it is. Then sit up. I can't. I gotta lay down. Yeah. Ryder's not going to be able to see the ER sign, so you're going to have to somewhat tell him where to go. Find it on the maps. Look at all the map. Yeah. I decided it was a good idea to buy into one of those. Um, the, you know, we all see it, we all read about it. The the injections to make you heal faster. So I got an injection in my knee. Um, it's uh, it put me on the floor. I couldn't sleep last night, and then today it got to the point I was puking um, and in pain and couldn't couldn't talk. My motor skills were going away, and I was just shivering. And uh, I had Ryder and Jade take me up to the hospital, so they just pulled off uh, I want to say 120 cc's of fluid and. Um, staying at least one night to see what we got to do. I know surgeries in the morning and, um, you know, it's, uh, <laughs> seems everything I've done in the last few weeks has, has come around to bit me, obviously. Two days ago, I got, uh, released from Sherco and yesterday I got an infection and today I'm in a hospital. So, um, you know, it's, uh, it's been tough, but we'll come back. Uh, then the infection had set in and it was it, it was the worst thing I mean we went through multiple surgeries that week and uh, stayed in the hospital for a full week with this thing recovering and um, you know now they're saying four to six weeks of this so I have to take in antibiotics um, by IV through my pick line that they put in and um, you know it's uh, it was what what you know a, a, what we know is a fairly fairly common surgery for motocross in general has turned into potentially a life changing event for me. You know, I, I took steps back and my, I lost my motion, I lost my strength again. The swelling came back, and every every stride that I thought we had taken over the two weeks prior has basically been thrown back into my face, and you know, once again another closed door. Do you regret? Like getting the injection now? Um, you know, I 
I, I wouldn't say I regret getting the injection. I, I think it was a stupid move because somebody told me not to do it, but I, I would almost try it again. When you realize that you've been fired and it's mid-season and you're looking at a six-month heal time and nobody knows that you're injured and you're thinking, okay, well, maybe, you know, maybe racing will push back a few months if we get this injection and I can be racing in a few months. I might still get a ride. I might still be able to make my house payment. I might still be able to take care of all these things. And, and that was, you know, where my decision came from. It wasn't, it wasn't just because I wanted to get back on the bike faster. If, if that were the case, I would have, I would have, tried you know a, an off-the-wall surgery to begin with I went with a, a very common surgery so that we weren't trying anything experimental and I did that on my own and it was it was not the right decision now looking back but I think I would make that decision over again um, and take the risk I don't know what the next deal is I don't know where to go you know it's not like it's not like I can call a team up and say hey you know, here I am, um, injured, not only injured, but had a bad infection, can't walk. I know COVID-19 is going on and we're not racing. Is there any way that you can pay me? Like, <laughs> you know, the, the, those rides just don't happen. I mean, even a mid-season deal by itself alone, I mean, that's, that's something that you don't see happening because budgets are set. I'm left with, you know, I'm, I mean, I'm left with no options. I'm left with nothing here. I mean, every, every, every single card I've got is gone. I mean, I, I have nothing to play. I have nothing. I'm now using the money that, that I've made over the last 10 years of my professional career to survive at a point where I thought I would never have to worry about this. So that's, uh, I mean, I, I guess that's as bottom as it gets and just hope that the money doesn't run out. <laughs> you feel like you took for granted like being healthy and just winning and the good times and the idea that they might come back around, how much more they might mean to you now? I think that I, I always appreciated it. Um, I think that after my first set of injuries, I, I, I learned to appreciate the, the wins and the good times. Um, you know, when I was younger, I didn't, when I was growing up and going through the youth ranks up into the pro class, I definitely did not, um, appreciate, you know, what I had become and, and what was happening in my life and in the sport. Um, you know, after, after I came back, I, you know, I was still young, but I, I appreciated it a lot more. Um, I felt that I had matured a lot with my first set of injuries, but, um, you know, to, to come back this time, I, I can only imagine it'll taste that much better. And, you know, I, it's, I'm coming back differently this time. I, I feel that when I come back this time, I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to come back, um, you know, I, with a different, with a different mentality completely. Um, you know, I, I, I hate to say it this way, but um, you know, I, I've always been I've always been fun. I've always had fun, um, and I loved racing. And um, it seems that there is no room for that, and nobody wants that. You know, it, the the fans do, but the industry doesn't. They don't want fun. So, um, you know, when I when I come back, I I'm going to come back to win. I have no doubt in my mind that that's what I'm going to come back to. And, you know, I hope that, it, honestly, I hope that I don't appreciate it this next time around. I hope that I appreciate the battle that it took to get there. I hope that, I hope that wins come so easy that I don't even appreciate them. Time to get rolling and go GNCC racing here. But uh, the big uh, thing, you heard the crowd cheers. We haven't seen Stu Baylor on a motorcycle on the GNCC trail since, well, round three, the general GNCC.
say thanks to, buddy? Uh, you know, first off, I, I got to give it up to Jay. He's been, he's been busting his ass all week, and, uh, you know, this is not the first week he's done this uh, with my bike changes, I think three of them in the last month. So, um, him, my wife, uh, the Shoals MX, my aunt and uncle, my parents, Yamaha, um, everybody that kept believing in me when things weren't going <laughs> the way they needed to go. Ladies and gentlemen, Thanks, taking it to the top.